Learn foundation paper piecing with Amber Makes Sewing School. Learn how to make a sewing machine using FPP and use it to make a made-to-measure sewing machine cover to fit your sewing machine perfectly. Preparing the templates and the fabric. Either trace off or print out the templates by downloading them from the Amber Makes website. If you look at all of them, you can see the templates have a solid line around them and an outer dash line. The outer dash line includes a seam allowance and this is what you need to cut along. You can also see that all of the templates are labelled with their letter and their number because the pieces are put together in numerical order. Cut around the outer dashed line for each of the templates. So I've got a template A, B, C and D. Remember the outer dash line you need to cut along, not the solid line. The dash line includes the seam allowance. So there's the piece G. You can see there's lots of pieces on that. Some pieces only, templates only have one piece of fabric, others have more, but they are all labelled with their letter and their number. So it's easy to see what piece of fabric you put where. Now I've printed these out onto just thin photocopier paper or you can use special FPP paper but this paper will be torn away afterwards so it needs to be thin and low quality. Now take the panel that comes with your kit and if you have a look at it you can see that each piece of fabric is labelled. So there's background fabric and all the other fabrics have numbers on them so fabric two, three, four, all the different numbers. Cut around the outer line of each of the pieces and then pin the label that's above them to the top of the right side so that you know which fabric is which. There's plenty of fabric here, so cut around the outside and you will have more than enough to use for your foundation paper piecing. Now I've cut them out, you can see that I've pinned the label to them so I remember which is which when I'm cutting out the pieces for my foundation paper piecing. So there's all the different fabrics here with their names this is the vintage one. If you're making the other design, the other print, the fabrics will be a different colour, but they all have labels above them. So just make sure you pin them on because they're all different sizes and prints. And then you'll use the correct piece of fabric for the correct piece when you're creating your FPP sewing machine. Now you need to cut out. Now before you cut out the FPP pieces, from the background fabric and fabric too, you need to cut some strips off first before you do the FPP. For the background fabric, you have to cut strips with the borders and from fabric to your cutting strips for the binding. So here are the border strips. Cut those off first. It just makes means that you'll have enough and long enough pieces and then put that to one side. From fabric two, cut the binding strips. You'll use this to finish off the edge of your block when you make it into your sewing machine cover later. Now, to cut the pieces of fabric, you can either cut them as you go along or you can cut them in advance. If you look at the key, you can see that it tells you what colour to use where. Now, the fabric pieces need to be at least a quarter of an inch bigger than the piece they're, the area they're covering. I like to cut mine half an inch bigger. So what I do, like here, is I measure the piece. So I'm measuring A4 here. And then I write down how much fabric I need and I cut a piece to that big. But I always cut it half an inch bigger all round. And do that with all of them. Have a look at the key to see which fabric goes where. The white sections that aren't coloured in are for the background fabric. And then all of the other pieces you can see have all the different colours on them. And just refer to the key and then you will know which fabric goes where. It's really easy to work it out and it doesn't matter which design panel you're using. Just follow the key. So this is the A template and I've cut out all of my pieces and I've written using an erasable pen on the back of them. So there's A1 and you can see that's for the A1 piece. There's A2, there's A3 and there's A4. And you can see they're half an inch bigger all round so that I've got more than enough. Now I, if you want to cut out all of your fabrics in advance like I've done, clip them to, to the template and then it keeps them all together in one piece. You can cut them as you go along, it really doesn't matter as long as you cut them about half an inch bigger and there is enough fabric on the panel to be able to do that. But I've cut mine in advance so you can see I've pinned, I've clipped all the fabric pieces 
with their template on top. And it's so much easier when you come to do your FPP because everything is in one place. So do take the time to get the fabric cut to the right size and clip to the correct template. By organising yourself like this in advance, you'll make things a lot easier for you later. You can see I've layered them all up on the back and clipped them into place. Making template A. So we're going to start with making template A. So there's the paper template and you can see it's labelled 1, 2, 3 and 4. Take the A1 fabric and turn the paper over so it's wrong side up and put a little bit of glue if you've got some just on the back of where the A1 section is. Now place the A1 fabric right sides up so that the wrong side of the fabric is on facing the wrong side of the paper. Now hold it up just to make sure that that fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch all the way round. Now fold the fabric along the paper along the line between A1 and A2 like this. Now we're going to trim the seam allowance. You need to trim it quarter of an inch bigger. You can use a ruler like this or this add a quarter ruler is ideal it has. It has a little quarter of an inch lip so it makes the trimming very easy. You can use either of these. So place the lip up against the paper and trim that A1 fabric so it's quarter of an inch bigger than where that folded line is and that's your seam allowance. Now take the A2 fabric and place this right sides facing with the A1 fabric. Place it to making sure that it extends either side of where the A2 section is. Now the easiest way to do that is hold it in place, fold the paper back down and pin the fabrics and the paper together along the line between A1 and A2. This is where you're going to be sewing. Now to double check that it covers the area properly, fold it back over and you can see now that that fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch all the way round outside of the A2 section. Fold it back down so that the two fabrics are right sides facing and sew along the line. Start at the top and then you can stitch all the way into the seam allowance. But don't stitch above that the line that's where it joins A4 but just stitch into the seam allowance. Now take your iron, press to set the seam and fold the A2 fabric over so that it covers the paper and press. It's really important that you press this in place to keep have a nice neat seam. Now we can put the A3 fabric on. So fold the paper on the line between A1 and A3. You can use a ruler to fold that against or you can just score it with your nail. Now again cut this fabric so we're cutting the A1 a quarter of an inch outside of the paper fold like this. So now you can see the A1 fabric is extending a quarter of inch beyond the fold. Take your A3 fabric and place that right sides facing with the A1 fabric, making sure that the A3 fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch all the outside of the section, that rectangle that says that's got A3 in the middle. Pin it together along the line between A1 and A3 and then fold the A3 fabric over and you can see here that it extends way beyond that the quarter of an inch. Fold it back over and now stitch from the seam allowance all the way along and stop at the line where it joins A4. Once you've done that, press it again, same process each time for adding all the fabric, fold it over and press. So you always join the fabrics on in numerical order. When you sew them, never sew beyond the seam inside a template or along the line inside, but you can sew beyond it if you're going to the seam allowance. Now you need to fold it along the bottom of the A4 section. Just check that you fold it along that line and then trim the fabric so that it is quarter of an inch outside of that fold. You can remove that. Take your A4 piece of fabric, place it right sides facing with all the other three fabrics that are joined, matching the raw edges and again making sure that the A4 fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch outside of the paper and outside of the section that you are joining. So this A4 fabric is going to cover the A4 section on the paper so it needs to extend at least a quarter of an inch beyond it. Pin together along the line because this line is longer I'm using two pins to double check fold it to make sure that the fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch beyond, fold the fabric back and then stitch all the way along the line and you can start stitching from one seam allowance to the other. 
just as you've done before. Press the seam to set it, then fold the fabric over and give it a press. And now you've attached all the fabric pieces for template A, one, two, three and four. So all you need to do now is trim it. So trim along that dashed line all the way around, not along the solid line, but along the dash line, because you still need that seam allowance when you join the templates together. If you're using a rotating cutting lap mat, lap, like I'm using, you can just turn the cutting mat round. It saves having to move the template and the paper, and then you can just turn it round and cut all the way on. If you don't have a rotating cutting mat, you'll just have to turn the paper, but this is just a little bit easier and stop, means you don't have to move anything. You can discard all those seam allowances, and that is template A complete with all the pieces. So put that to one side and you can now start on the next templates. Making templates B to P. I'm going to show you here now how to make template B. All the templates are made using exactly the same method as A. So we'll just start, put a little piece of glue on the back of the centre of B1 section and then place the wrong side of the fabric facing the wrong side of the paper. So the fabric is right side down and the paper is right side up. If you don't have glue, you can pin this into place. Now fold the paper on the line that's between B1 and B2. Trim off the seam allowance so it's quarter of an inch bigger outside of the fold. Take the B2 fabric and place it right sides facing with the B1 fabric making sure that the you match the raw edge of B1 and B2 fabrics and so that the fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch outside of the area it's going to cover. Pin together through the paper and the two fabrics along the line and then to double check it does cover that area, fold it back. Once you're happy with that, so along the seam allowance and stop at the end of the line within the template. You must never stitch beyond the lines on the template, only outside of the seam allowances. Press the seam to set it, fold the B2 fabric over and press it so that the fold where the seam is is right on the edge. Now turn it over to the paper side and fold along the line of B3. So this is the line that crosses B1 and B2, so it's the B3 line. Fold it along there and trim off the seam allowance so it's a quarter of an inch beyond the fold. Now take your B3 fabric and place it right sides facing, matching the raw edges, making sure it stands a quarter of an inch beyond the area of the B3 it's going to cover. Make sure the raw edges of the fabric match up, that's really important. Fold the paper back, pin it together along the line. I find that pinning along the line is the best way to check that it fits, because you need to make sure it fits. Now I think that's a little bit close on the right hand side. If you find it's in the wrong place, just unpin it and you can move the fabric to the right or to the left, depending on where you want some more fabric. It's not always easy to see exactly. So it's best to repin if you're not sure because unpicking the stitching is quite difficult because you use a very short stitch length of about 1.5 to leave perforations. So when you unpick it, it can tear the paper. So it's best to get this right. So stitch together all the way along that line. You can stitch from one the end of one seam allowance to the other because if the lines go into the seam allowances, you can sew into them. You must only stop stitching if the line stops within the template. Fold the fabric over and give it a press just like before. And then to attach the B4 section, fold the paper along the line between B3 and B4. Because I've sewn into the seam allowance, to fold that properly, you will need to tear the paper a little bit because it needs to lay over and flat. But you can tear it into the seam allowance. And because you've stitched along there, the perforations will allow you to tear it. And then trim the fabrics a quarter of an inch beyond the fold. Take your B4 fabric, place that right sides facing matching up the raw edges of the seam allowance you've just trimmed and the seam allowance and the fab raw edge of the B4 fabric pinned together along the line. Now as you become more proficient with FPP you might get better at working out exactly where to place this and you won't need to pin you can just hold it but I think to start with this is a double check you can see that the fabric extends at least a quarter of an inch outside of the template and then you can sew all the way along that B4 line 
and now all your fabric pieces are attached. So just press to set the seam, fold the fabric over and give it a press. So all the fabric pieces are attached now. So all you need to do now is trim the fabrics. Remember, you need to trim them along the dashed line because you still need that quarter of an inch seam allowance for when you join the templates together. So trim it all the way around the edge. I'm turning my cutting mat because I'm using a rotating one, but if you don't have one of those, it doesn't matter. Just turn the, fab the paper and the fabric. I just find it easier to use a rotating one for this. And now that is template B all finished. So you can put that to one side with template A that you made before. It's easier to make all the templates in advance and then join them together later. So here is template C, as you can see, made in the same way. And template D, lots of pieces on this, lots of little pieces that create the curve on the inside of the sewing machine, on the inside of the body. That creates that nice curve. Template E. That goes below the seam, that's part of the sewing machine body where the needle will be. And template F, which is the bit that holds the needle. Now with template G, there's an extra thing you need to do with this. We've printed G1, so it has the dial in the centre that goes on the machine. So it's important that you place this centrally on the G1 section on the paper. So the best way to do this is measure to find the centre. So if you measure across from side to side and top to bottom, where those that halfway point matches, just put a mark and then put a pin through there. Now remember that the wrong side of the fabric needs to be touching the wrong side of the paper. So I put a bit of glue on the paper to hold this fabric in place and then push that pin up through the centre of the printed dial that's on your fabric. Once you're happy that they are, the pins are level, you can then remove it and then G1 fabric is now attached exactly, exactly central in that pink G1 section. So to do G2, same as before, fold the paper along the line between G1 and G2. Trim the seam allowance to a quarter of an inch outside of the paper. Now take your G2 fabric piece, because you've written them on the back or you could use little pieces of paper. I just find writing them with an erasable pen makes it easier to find them. Place the G2 fabric right sides facing with the G1, making sure you have to fold it back a little bit to be sure, making sure that it just covers the G2 section and that you match up the raw edges. It's the same process whether you're using two pieces of fabric or 22 pieces of fabric, it's exactly the same process. So all you need to do then, I've made sure that covers it, same way as before, stitch it into place starting at the end, one end of the line and finishing at the other end. Now you can see I've attached G2, G3, G4 and G5. And this is what it will look like when you've attached them. That's the inner section of the outer dial. To work the outer section of the outer dial, you need to now do G6. So fold along the G6 line, trim the seam allowances, of all those fabrics, doesn't matter how many fabrics there are, you always fold the paper back and trim through all the seam allowances. Take your G6 piece of fabric, place it right sides facing, making sure that it's central and the raw edges are matching, and then sew together. Again, always pin along the line just to be sure. Fold it back, you can see it covers that area nicely and then sew that into place and then do six, seven, eight and nine. And then this is what it will look like. So these are all of the outer dial sections. You can see they, they're sewn round in a circle, just sew in numerical order and then you will have it correct. And then you can sew in all of the other pieces of fabric. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 and 18. And then that's what that will look like. And now you've got the dial nicely placed in the centre. Next, do template H, I. I is the thread spool. J is the bottom of the thread spool end. We've got K that's the 
balance wheel. L, that's the handle for the balance wheel. Now with M, it's only one piece of fabric. So the best way to do this is place a little bit of glue, a few little pieces of glue on the back of template M. Place that centrally on fabric M. And then trim the seam allowance along the dashed line. So trim it to the same shape. I'm just using my normal rotary cutting ruler for this. Now I do it this way rather than pinning it because it's only one piece of fabric. It can shift a little bit. You need the template so that you can then use this to sew to the other piece, pieces when you're assembling the template. And it means you've got the seam allowances and you can see them and it keeps it a bit more stable. So if there's only one piece of fabric, like with M and N, Always stick or pin the paper and then cut it into place. It just makes it easier later. There's O finished. That's the fabric on the bottom of the machine. And there's P, which is the base of the machine. Joining the templates. Now you've made all the templates, we can join them together. So following the block diagram, you can see where to join them together. Start by joining A and B. So B is jo joined to the bottom of A. Place them right sides facing. And to make sure that you position them correctly, put a pin through the corner of the where the outer line, the solid line is, through A, and make sure it comes out through the corner of B. Push them together and then place a vertical pin and then you can remove that placement pin. Do the same in the other corner. If you push the pin through the corner of those solid lines, now you can just sew them together without doing this, but I find you get a more accurate finish if you make sure that they match up exactly. Just because with the paper, it changes the fabric, it makes it a little bit more solid. And so if you make sure they join together better, you will get a more accurate finish. Then sew them together along the solid line. Once you've done that, you can see it looks like this. Now, before I press the seam open, I'm going to remove the paper just from the seam allowances. And the reason for this is that this paper, when you press the seam allowance open, will sit underneath the seam allowance and it makes it harder to take out later on. So I keep the rest of the papers in place until the very end, but I just remove them from the seam allowance. If you fold the paper down and then just fold it down and then push it along with your fingers it just helps to perforate it a bit more and then you can remove it if there's any tiny pieces you can just scratch them away with your nail once you've removed the paper from the seam allowances place the whole thing flat right sides down open up the seam allowance with your fingers and press it there are a lot of pieces in this fpp block so you're going to have a lot of seams to lay flat. So I find that by pressing them open and flat, you get a much flatter finish. And that's the A and the B section joined together. So now we're going to join C to the left of the A and B section. So place them right sides facing. And again, push the, a pin through the corner of the solid line of that C section and make sure it comes out in the corner of the B section. If it doesn't, you can just move it along slightly. Do the same at the other end. There are some sections where it's important that it joins within the section. You will see on the block diagram where it's important. So here, to make sure that the body of the machine matches up exactly on the B and the C, I'm pushing a pin through from where the body fabric meets the background fabric of C and of B and then pin it together. Always refer to the block diagram to see what piece to join to where and also the instructions tell you exactly what order to sew everything together. So it's A to B and then add C and so on but follow the instructions and look at the block diagram. But do take the time to match up the solid lines by pushing pins through and then placing a vertical pin through all the layers and then taking out that placement pin. You can now sew all of these pieces together along the solid line. Sew slowly and carefully to make sure you only sew along the solid line and not beyond it for an accurate finish. Again, fold the paper that's in the seam allowance over, just score it with your finger and then it will tear off. Because you've used a small stitch allowance, the perforations will help to remove the paper, but I find if you fold it over, and just flatten it slightly with your finger. It helps to just score those perforations a bit better. And then you can remove all these pieces of paper. It's much harder to take them out afterwards after you've pressed the seam allowance open. So just take the time to do that. Don't remove any of the other pieces of paper just yet because you're going to need them for matching up those seam allowances. 
So now you've joined A, B and C together. So the next section is you need to join F below E. Again, match up and sew along the solid line. Once you've done that, join D to the left of E and F. Once you've done that, it will look like that. You can see I've pressed, always press the seam allowance open and flat before you move on to add another piece. Now you can join A, B and C above D, E and F. Again, the order of assembly is listed in the instructions that come with your kit. And also, if you look at the block diagram, it's really easy to see what pieces go in what order. And all the seams are pressed open and everything joins up nicely. Now you need to join H, I and J together. This makes the thread spool that will be sitting on top of the machine. These are little pieces, so take care with these. You can see I've pressed the seam allowances open and flat. And then you can join the next section below. So you're joining G below H, I and J. And now it's the thread spool attached. And then once you've done that, you can join G, H, I and J to the left of the other assembled a to D templates. Sew them together all the way along, remove the paper from the seam allowances and press them flat. You've got the main body of the machine done now. The next section is to do the balance wheel. So join K and L together and then join M above K and L and join N below K and L. And this makes the left hand section of the machine. It'll be the right hand from the right side, but the left hand from the wrong side. So now join that balance wheel section to the left of the machine body. Again, this is now a longer seam. So push your pins in through the corners and also in several places along the mach machine, the line to make sure it matches all up nicely. So you can see that all joins on. And then take O and join that below and then P and join that P below O. And now you have assembled all of the FPP. So your sewing machine block is ready now for the next stage. Finishing off the block. Now all your FPP is complete and the templates are joined together, you can add the borders. It's best to do this with the paper still in place. So with right sides together, stitch the side borders either side of the finished block. Place them right sides facing and then turn it over and stitch them in place with the seams on the uppermost, so the paper uppermost, because it means you can stitch along the printed solid lines. Take the top border and sew this right sides facing along the top. Again, stitch, pin together and stitch along that solid line and you can be sure that you've got the exact quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then repeat that to pin and stitch the bottom border in place. And it will look like this. So now your FPP block has got this, all the borders attached. So it's 12 and a half inches square, so it'll be 12 inches when it's finished. Now the great P section, you can remove all the paper because you won't need that anymore. So just carefully work around the whole block. Tear out the paper because of the perforations because you've had a small stitch length. These are fairly easy to take out. The only difficulty is that when you've got lots of little small pieces or tight corners, you might find that the paper tears off and you have to go back and take them out. If you've got little tiny pieces, you can use tweezers or just scratch them with your finger, but just tear out all the paper. Do make sure that you take all of it out, otherwise it will be a bit, little bit stiff later. So where you've got the little pieces, that takes a bit more time, but it's really satisfying that your block is quite solid with all the paper and taking out all the paper gives you this lovely finished effect of it's all complete and perfect with all the seams matching. So turn it over. Now what you need to do now is draw in the thread and the needle. If you look at the block diagram, you can see these are drawn on there. So just follow this or just judge it by eye. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Just make sure that the thread comes off the spool through the thread guides around and through the needle. 
stitch the needle into place using a grey thread and I work two lines of stitching and then stitch the thread that comes off the spool in a colour thread that matches the thread spool. Making a made-to-measure sewing machine cover. Let's start by measuring up and cutting the fabric. Measure your sewing machine and write the measurements down. In the instructions it explains how to measure your machine and how to use these measurements to calculate the fabric pieces you'll need. You'll need the binding strips that you cut earlier to bind the edges of the block. You might need them on the sides and the top and the bottom. It just depends on your measurements which you'll work out in a moment. Now using the measurements that I've listed in the instructions that explain how to measure your machine and how to add extra for ease and seam allowances, cut out all the pieces. You'll need a front outer, a back outer, a two side outer pieces and a top outer. You can use whatever fabric you like for this. I've used a fabric that coordinates and matches the edges of my sewing machine block, the background fabric, but it's entirely up to you. Then for your contrast fabric, you'll use that for the lining. Again, you need a front lining, a back lining, a top lining and two side lining pieces. Again, use whatever fabric you like to contrast or complement your block. To add pockets to the side of your sewing machine cover, you need two pocket outers and two pocket linings using the measurements that you've calculated. And you'll need a binding strip. You may need to cut more than one piece of fabric and join them together. But again, all the calculations and measurements for this are in the instructions for you. And you'll also need some wadding. Attaching the block. Now you need to bind the raw side edges of the sewing machine block to neaten them so that you can sew them onto the front outer. Now my block happened to be exactly the same height as my front outer so I only need to bind the sides. If your block is shorter than the front outer then you will need to bind the top and bottom. They're bound together in the same way. So start off by binding the sides. Place the side strip so the binding strip sides right sides facing down the side of the block matching up the side and the top raw edges like this pin together at one end and then pin together at the other end this binding strip sides piece is only narrow because you're only going to do a little quarter of an inch binding so just match up the raw edges all the way around because you cut them in the van in advance the measurements for cutting these strips are in the instructions so these have already been cut and ready. I've used the same fabric for these binding strips that's in the body of the machine but obviously if you want to use a different fabric then go ahead and the instruction the measurements are in the instructions. Now sew that into place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance then take the strip and fold it upwards away from the block and give it a press. This just helps it to lay flat and make sure that seam is right on the edge. And then turn the block over so it's wrong sides up and fold that binding strip over to the wrong side so it just covers the edge. Now normally with a binding strip you turn this long edge under as well. But because you're going to sew this on top of the front out of the sewing machine cover it just needs to fold over. So fold, it'll be folded over by a quarter of an inch just to encase that raw edge. And then bind the other side in the other way using the other binding side strips. So just fold them under and make sure they're pressed. And that's the, both sides now neatly bound. Just give them a press and you can pin them into place if you like or just press them neatly. Now if you do need to bind the top and the bottom because your block isn't as tall as your sewing machine cover, then take the t one of the top and bottom strips. Now these are a little bit longer so what you need to do is fold the short ends under by a quarter of an inch. You can judge this by eye although it's better if you measure it. So turn them under by a quarter of an inch and now they will fit across the top. So place this top strip right sides facing and pin it together at one end and pin it together at the other end making sure those side strips stay folded under and then sew it together across the top and then repeat that to bind the bottom edge in the same way. And because I didn't need to do that with mine, I'm just going to place mine on top. So take your front outer and measure to make sure that this is placed centrally across the top outer and 
century from the top and bottom if your block is shorter. Do measure and then you can mark your front outer if you like. Just make sure that it's central. By sewing this on top of the fabric rather than sewing it between it, it you just get a neater finish and it will sit together better. Once you've measured to, and marked it to make sure it's central, you can just pin the binding to the front outer. I think also by sewing it on top of the front outer and having the binding, it's a neater finish and gives a little bit more structure to the front and I find that this is an easier method. And it gives you that nice, neat bound edge as well. Which makes your sewing machine cover look a little bit more professional. So pin it together and then top stitch down both sides and then top stitch the binding if you've done the top and the bottom. And if not, just tack the top and bottom into place so that you have sewn your block to the front outer along all four sides. Now you need to quilt all the pieces. So place all of the pieces, the front outer, the back outer, the side outers and the top outer onto wadding and quilt it in whatever pattern you want. I've quilted horizontal lines on some, vertical lines on others and I also quilted around the sewing machine block to give a bit of detail and structure. So you need to do the sides, the top, the front and the back and you can see I quilted around the sewing machine too. Attaching the pockets. Place one pocket outer and one pocket lining right sides facing. And then pin, then stitch together along the top edge only. Obviously these pockets are optional. I use them for keeping some of my sewing machine um, pieces in them. You don't have to attach them but they do make a nice finish. Once you've sewn together along the top edge only, open out the fabric, press that seam open and flat and then refold the two pocket pieces so that they are wrong sides facing and press so the seam is at the top and top stitch along through the outer and the lining and this gives a neat top edge to your pocket. Now take one of the side outers, make the other pocket in the same way, take one of the side outers and place one of the pockets on top matching up the bottom and the side edges because the pocket is going to sit at the bottom of this. Now, if you want to divide your pocket, depending on what you want to put inside, you might want to leave it as one whole one. If you want to divide it in half, measure to find the halfway point along the top edge. And then to make sure that's straight, if you use your rotary cutting ruler to draw, draw a line all the way down using an erasable pen or lightly in pencil, Pin the pocket into place and then stitch together. So tack down the side across the bottom. So up to the top of that dividing line, back down and then up the other side. And it will now look like this. You've got a dividing line and the pocket is tacked together around the edges. Repeat to attach the other pocket to the other side. I didn't put the dividing line in this one so that I could store bigger items in there. Making the cover outer. Place the front cover outer and the top outer right sides facing matching the bottom long length edge of the top outer with the top length edge of the front outer so basically you're pinning the top to the top of the front as you can see here make sure that you match up the raw edges start by matching up the corners placing a pin between them and then pin along between those outer edges Again, as you're pinning along, make sure that the raw edges are matching. Now sew these two pieces together along that pinned edge. Now open it out and press that seam open and flat. Now you need to attach the back outer and that's attached to the other long length edge of the top outer like this. So place those two pieces right sides facing so that you are sewing the top edge of the back outer to the other long length edge of the top outer. So the top is now sewn between the front and the back. Again, match up those corners first and then pin between, making sure the raw edges match. Then once you've pinned them together, 
sew them together along this pinned edge. Once that's done, press the seam open and flat and now you've joined the top between the front and the back and it will look like this. You now need to join the side outers on. These are the ones with the pockets on. So place one side outer right sides facing with the right hand side of the front outer. I'm going to turn it over because I want to pin it from this side so that the seam that joins the top is on the, will be on the top. So pin together at either end, open out that seam allowance that joins the top to the front and so that the edge of the seam allowance is, it matches up with the top corner of that side. This means that the seam will be sitting a quarter of an inch in from the edge. Then it will fit exactly. So pin it together between, again, make sure you match up the raw edges. Then sew together starting at the end, the bottom end, and finishing exactly on that seam. Don't stitch beyond the seam. And then it will look like this. You can now turn the side round and pin the top of the side to the short edge of the top outer. So you can see it just folds round. So basically you are sewing the side round the edges of the front, top and back. So pin together along the top, Again, on the right hand side, make sure that the seam sits a quarter of an inch in from the end of the top. So that when the seam allowance is open, you can see I've pinned them open, just helps to hold them flat. So that the edge of the seam allowance matches up with the edge of the top outer. Pin together, making sure the raw edges match and starting at one seam. So all the way along and finish exactly on the seam. Don't sew into the seam allowance beyond it. And then it will look like this. Now you just need to join the other end of the side outer to the back outer. So pin them together at the bottom edge first. And then pin at the top edge. And then pin between those pins, making sure that the raw edges match up. And you're sandwiching the pocket between those two pieces. Now so starting at the top, on that seam and stitch all the way along to the bottom edge. And now you've joined one side outer to the front top and back and you need to join the other side outer like I've already done here in exactly the same way. Now turn the cover outer right sides out just to make sure that all the seams are laying nice and flat and that you haven't got any puckers or creases. I always check this first because we'll be turning it wrong sides out in a moment. But just check that all of those seams are laying nicely on the edge and you can give them a press if you like to just make sure that they're laying on the edge. I like to lay them flat like this and press. And then, then you can see you've got the pockets on the side and the whole cover outer is now finished assembling the cover. Make the cover lining in exactly the same way as the cover outer using the front lining, back lining, top lining and two sides lining pieces and it will look like this. Now turn the cover outer and the cover lining wrong sides out so they look like this. Place the top lining section of the cover lining wrong sides facing on the top section of the cover outer so you've got the top outer and the top lining wrong sides facing. Now you need to pin them together along where the seams are. They're exactly the same size because you've cut them to the same size so pin them together, fold the seam allowances open and pin them together matching up the corners all the way around. Now the reason we're doing this is because you don't want the lining to flop downwards, it needs to be held into place. This can be hand sewn but I find this the easiest and neatest way to do it. So matching up the corners first and making sure that the seam, the raw edges of the fabric so at the outside of the seam allowances are all matching up exactly. This is really important because you may have pressed them open and flat when you were doing it but it's important that all the raw edges, so you've got the two raw edges of the outer fabric and the wadding and the two raw edges of the lining. So work all the way round making sure those raw edges match up and pin them together. 
Work round one side at a time. When you get to the corners, it might not be as easy to match them up exactly. So just match them up. And if you can't get pins in the corners, it doesn't matter because you don't need to stitch right into the corners. But place the corners together. Don't worry if parts of them are folded over where you've sewn them. The most important thing is that those seam allowances are matching up so that the raw edges match. If you need to repress the fabric at all, just to make sure that the all the edges are next to each other in case you press them open while you were doing construction, then do that as well. But work all the way round. Always pin together a match at the corners first and then pin between the corners. So this is a really useful method for keeping a lining inside. But the most important thing is they need to be wrong sides facing. It may seem really strange how it's all going to turn right sides out but it really does work and it will hold the lining right up inside your cover and then I'm working on the final side again I've, I've matched up the corners already because I've obviously pinned there so now I'm just pinning across the final side so you're pinning all the way around the top so that you've got two long edges of the top and two short edges now once you've pinned together all the way round you need to stitch all these layers together but you need to stitch within the seam allowance so about an eighth of an inch from the edge because this seam you don't want to come beyond the seams that you've already stitched because this seam won't be seen so it's a just inside the seam allowance you can use a longer tacking stitching for this it is just to hold it into place once you've done it you can see here how that seam that I've just worked is very close to the edge so that it won't be seen for the right side. Now it's quite tricky to stitch into the corners just because of all the seams but don't worry just stop stitching. I've stopped stitching about half to a one inch before the corners and that doesn't matter because it's mainly to keep the lining inside the cover. Once you've done that you can now fold the lining over the cover so now the lining and the outer are wrong sides facing so just fold it down and you can see it's now held together along the top edge. So turn the whole cover right sides out so the outer is on the outside. And you now need to match up the bottom edge of the lining and the bottom edge of the outer. Start by matching up the seams. So I'm matching up here the seams that join the sides pieces to the front and the back. Match up the seams of the lining and the outer Remember, you cut them all to the same size at the beginning so they will match. Make sure those seam allowances are open and flat at this stage. It just helps this to lie flat and when you bind it later, you'll get less bulk. If they're not staying open and flat very well, just pop them on your ironing board and give them a press again. So pin together at the seams and then pin between, making sure that the raw edges of the lining are matching with the raw edges of the outer. So work your way round to the next seam, open up the seam allowance Make sure those seam allowances sit exactly on each other, sit on top of each other and it's wrong sides facing. I like to pin it at all the seams first because they're sort of anchoring points. It helps to keep everything together. Because depending on how big you've made your sewing machine cover, if you've got a really big machine, there's a lot of fabric now. So to keep everything anchored, it's easy if you pin at all the seams first and then pin between them. The most important thing is to make sure the raw edges match up so that the lining is then sitting exactly in the right place on the outer. Otherwise, you will get it slightly puckered. So just make sure that all lines up. All the way along. Put in as many pins as you need just to make sure everything's lining up. Now, once you've pinned it together, tack together all the way around within the seam allowance. So about an eighth of an inch of the edge. And now you can see I've tacked the bottom edge of the lining to the bottom of the edge of the outer all the way around. And now your lining is held neatly inside the outer. And because you've sewn it together at the top, it will all stay inside and it won't droop down. Now you're ready to do the binding. Binding the bottom edge. Take your binding strips and you may need to join several together to get them the right length as listed in the instructions. 
Then fold one short edge of the join binding strips over by quarter of an inch to the wrong side. Now take your sewing machine cover that you've now finished and measure or fold it to find the centre of the back outer. This is because this is where you're going to start binding. And mark that with a pin, just so that you can find the centre. Remember the measurements for working out how long your binding strip to be you know, in the instructions. So you've cut and joined that already. Now take the binding strip and then with that folded under short end, we're going to sew it right sides facing to the lining side. So put that turned over edge at the centre mark on the back of the centre, the back of the centre of the back outer. And then pin the binding strip all the way around the edge. Make sure it's right sides facing with the lining. And the important thing here is that the raw edges match up. And this means that your binding strip, once you've sewn it, will be the same width all the way around. So pin it together all the way around. When you get back to where you started, overlap that short end over that turned under end and pin it into place and then trim it. It only needs to overlap the short end by about a quarter of an inch. And yours may be a little bit longer because you've added extra for ease as you've done it. So just trim it so it overlaps that short end by about a quarter of an inch. Now, sew together, sew it in place, but using a half inch seam allowance. This will give you a half inch finish binding, which gives it a nice deep edge and is a nicer finish to your sewing machine cover. So you see here, I've sewn it all into place with the half inch seam allowance. So now lay it down flat, fold that binding upwards away from the lining and press it all the way around. Once you've pressed that like that, turn the long edge over so that it meets up with the raw edge of the outer and then fold it over. Now that folded under edge needs to just cover the seam that you've just worked. So I find that if you fold the long edge so that it meets up with the raw edge and fold it under, just make sure it just covers that seam because you don't want to see that seam, but you don't want it any wider than that. So just cover and then fold it into place all the way around like this and you get a neatly bound edge at the bottom. And because it's a half inch, it just gives a nice finish because your sewing machine cover, even if it's a little one, needs this extra. Then top stitch from the outer side, the binding into place. It will then look really, really neat like this with that line of top stitching all the way around. And now your sewing machine cover will fit your sewing machine perfectly and it's all finished and ready to slip over and keep it dust free. You can use your block like I've done this one. If you don't want to make a sewing machine cover, I made mine into a little tote bag, which I quilted. I've added some border fabrics round it. And then I used two of the fabrics to make matching handles. And you can use that for keeping all your sewing machine parts in or for going shopping.